In this video, I want to talk about a specific problem that happens when you float items in your layout. It's the problem of collapsing parents. I have some starter files that you can download and work with, but this problem is pretty common and you can probably reproduce it easily on your own. I have two common scenarios set up where we might run into this problem. One is a navigation area and the other is a two column layout. This is the HTML file. I have the navigation area set up with the usual unordered list. The main area consists of an article element and a sidebar which is just a div with a class of sidebar. You can see in my CSS file I have set up some of the styles but I'm not doing much with the layout yet. I haven't floated anything. I have background colors on all of my elements so that we can see the problem when I add the floats. First, I'll add a float to the navigation list item so that each menu item is on the same line and we have a navigation bar. When we look at the page, the navigation area with its gold background seems to have disappeared. It hasn't really disappeared, it's just collapsed. This has happened because we have floated the li tags inside of the ul. So these items were taken out of the normal document flow. So now the ul tag thinks it has nothing inside of it to take up space, so it has collapsed. We can see this more clearly if I add a border to the ul tag in the CSS. You can now see the body of it is empty. There's nothing inside the three pixel border, so it looks like we have a six pixel black line right now. There are several different ways that we can fix this problem. The first way is to float the parent of the floated items. So that would be the UL tag. This solution is not working very well in this case because the parent item, the UL, ends up wrapping itself around the LI items and we don't get the navigation bar to span the full width of the screen anymore. Also, it's taken out of the normal document flow as well, so its parent, the body tag, is collapsing a bit, and the items below it, the main area, has jumped higher. So we'll try a second solution instead. I'll comment out the float and instead use the overflow solution. If I set the overflow property on the parent item, it will prevent it from collapsing. It actually doesn't matter what I set the property to. I usually use auto and only change it if I need a specific overflow behavior. This solution works better. We can see the navigation bar spans the full width of the viewport again, and it has the proper margin below it. Nothing is collapsed. I'll comment out this solution as well. There's actually another more logical solution for this scenario that would also work, and that's simply to give the UL tag a height. If we give it a height, it's not going to collapse, regardless of whether or not it thinks it has any content inside of it. I happen to know the height of 43 pixels will match the LI items, so I'll make that the height, and the collapsing disappears again. This solution works well when you can give an area a fixed height, but often you won't know how tall an element will be. That's the case with this main content area. I'll make these two sections inside main float so we can see the problem again. We can see that the parent, which is the main div, has collapsed. This time we can still see part of it because of the padding I have. There's 20 pixels on the top and bottom, so that means we're still seeing 40 pixels of that background color. But that's not enough to wrap around the article or sidebar. We don't know how tall these elements will be, so we can't set the height here to solve the problem. We could use the overflow auto solution here. That works. I'll comment this out and call it option two since it's the same solution I used on the navigation. Another solution is to use what is called the clear fix solution. If you search the web, you'll find many descriptions of this. There are multiple versions of this concept. The most basic method of this is to just add an empty div with a class of clear fix at the bottom of your parent container. You insert it after the floated elements. 
Then in your CSS, you can set the clear fix class selector to clear both. That means anything that has that clear fix selector can't have anything floating to the right or the left. This solves the problem again. This is because the empty div is still in the normal document flow since it's not floated. And since it's cleared on both the left and right sides, it has to come below the elements before it. It's forced to the bottom of the parent container. That gives the parent container the correct height again. You can see when I have the clear fix selected in my brackets editor that the empty div is down here at the bottom with no height. It's this div forcing the parent to have a height. This solution is simple and it works, but it's considered non-semantic because you're adding empty divs to your document. So there's another solution that most developers prefer for the clear fix, and it allows you to avoid adding that empty div. I'll remove it and comment out the CSS. For the next option, I'll add a class name of CF for clear fix and add it to the parent element that we want to keep from collapsing. I can write the CSS for the CF class. It uses the pseudo element after, which lets you insert content into your page without touching the HTML. Inside the selector, we can add this code. Content with a value of a blank space, display with a value of table, and clear with a value of both. Basically, the after pseudo selector is adding a space to the end of the parent element and it's cleared on both sides. So anything floated above it is contained inside the parent element. The concept is the same as the clear fix div we added in option three, but this allows you to avoid adding empty divs everywhere in your code. You can find more complicated versions of this clear fix all over the web, but mostly those are to support earlier versions of IE. This version should work in all modern browsers, including IE 8 and above. My preferred solution has always been to use the overflow option, option number two. It actually took me a while to fully understand the clear fix option, so I didn't ever think to use it and overflow auto just became my default solution. You really could use any of these options, but I'd probably try to avoid the empty div option, option number three.